Hey Pilgrims, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. A ton of people are playing Lost Ark and Elden Ring, but I'm still absolutely enjoying Dying Light 2. And what helps keep it fun is upgrading blueprints that makes life way easier. In today's video, I'll show you three blueprints that changed the game for me. And at the end, as a bonus, I'll show you my new favorite farming spot for trophies, which you'll need for upgrades. So the first and most important blueprint upgrade is the throwing knives. You get this extremely early in the game, and it definitely needs to be the number one thing you upgrade first. As you upgrade it, it'll craft more knives at a time, deal more damage, and stagger your opponents, your enemies. One of the best things about throwing knives is that it's cheap to craft. Although the tooltip when fully upgraded, we'll say that it only does 50 damage. When you actually craft these fully upgraded throwing knives, they'll deal 150 damage, which is essentially enough to kill standard infecteds and virals in one shot. One of the things you'll find out in playing multiplayer is that some accessories like molotovs and grenades, it can cause deadly friendly fire. That is not the case with throwing knives, and you can throw them with reckless abandon. Don't forget that throwing knives can take advantage of the serial shot ability in the lower right of the combat tree, which allows you to target up to three enemies at once, and this is a great backup weapon to your bow or crossbow when infected gets too close. The second blueprint I'd recommend upgrading are lockpicks. This is for convenience, as right from the start, you can lockpick any chest you encounter, whether it's easy, hard, or the very rare, very hard, but it can take a long time to lockpick them. Certain places like the THV buildings or military convos are too dangerous to spend time to actually lockpick. A fully upgraded lockpick blueprint will allow you to force open any chest up to hard difficulty. All you have to do is look at the chest, press and hold R, and it will auto lockpick it for you in about three seconds. One thing of note is that it will consume three to five lockpicks depending on the difficulty of the chest. But honestly, lockpicks are so cheap to make and I never spend time manually lockpicking anymore and it saves me so much time. The third and final blueprint that I'd recommend upgrading fully is the Muscle Booster, which should not be confused with the Rage Booster. When fully upgraded, the Muscle Booster will craft three of these consumables, which gives you a 50% increased melee damage for three minutes. While the Rage Booster does 100% increased melee damage, I don't like it because it slows down time and blurs the screen. The muscle booster doesn't affect your vision or the speed of the game. The most difficult thing for this blueprint is obtaining the poppy resource. Few vendors sell it, but if you look at the church district in the eastern part of the map downtown, you'll find Baba, which can sell them. There is also a greenhouse that you'll visit in Old Villador from a side quest that also has a few poppies. And you can find them also, finally, on the rooftop groves. So those are the three consumables and accessories that I'd recommend upgrading fully in Dying Light as soon as possible to give you a better slash easier gameplay experience. Now onto my favorite farming spot so you can earn trophies to upgrade these blueprints. At the beginning of the game, you can farm in front of the main doors of the bazaar at night. But if you made it to the downtown core, you can go to the Peacekeeper floating fortress and it's even better as there are two main places that infected will spawn from and it's a very bright area even in the dead of night. So you'll want to do this at night, and you'll want to find a Howler. Before you do this, you might want to clear the area of the basic infecteds, as they tend to grapple you at the worst time. Don't be scared, 
Just get close to the howler and you'll see the recognition meter fill up quickly, then turn red and then they'll howl and then the chase will start, which causes the fast virals to spawn. These special infecteds will almost always drop an uncommon or better trophy. The key to this method is to not kill the howler. The reason for this is because you'll need to come back to the Howler to restart the chase. If you kill them, you have to go further and further away from this spot. Once the chase starts, you'll want to move in between these two grates. And as you can see, about three to four virals, the fast ones, will pop up. But no more. The game can tell how many virals there are and it won't just keep spawning them. So you can't just like wait for them all. Once again, their bark is worse than their bite, literally. Just always strafe and move backwards and you'll be able to time your swings and kill these virals easily. If you're unlucky, your howler will be far away and you'll need to run back to it to keep the chase meter filling up. Just make sure that you're close to the UV lights of the PK base because once the chase becomes level 3, volatiles will start spawning. Although you can spend your time killing them, one small mistake can lead them to one-shotting you, no matter your level. It's better to run to the UV lights, which they cannot chase you through, and it'll reset the chase, causing all virals and all volatiles to run away. At this point, you can use your survivor sense to find the oldest virals you killed, and hopefully its body has despawned and left a loot bag on the ground. You may have noticed that looting bodies is much slower than these loot bags. So if there are too many bodies still around, just go to the howler to restart the chase. And by time you have to reset it, those bodies will have turned for sure into loot bags. Over the course of an entire night doing this, you can easily earn 100 uncommon trophies with the added bonus of a ton of night bonus to combat. And 100 uncommon trophies means that you can almost fully upgrade any blueprint from, from level 1 all the way to uh, level 7 or 8, I believe. The level 8 is going to require 100 uncommon trophies, so you'll need at least two nights to fully upgrade uh, any specific blueprint, but that is not too bad at all. So that is my video on my favorite three blueprints to upgrade for Dying Light 2. I hope it helped you out. Check out the rest of my channel for other videos on Dying Light 2, video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.